I thought I'd answer some commonly asked questions about the map prediction and fuel film model. So the first one is, how does it work for turbocharged engines? Um, and the answer is it works really well for a couple of reasons. First of all, there's a setting in the software um, where you choose whether it's NA or turbo or supercharged. And what that changes um, is that in the predicted map table, um, when you do the adaptive, um, so the self-learning for the predicted map table, so that's where the ECU measures the current map value and writes that into the table um, at the current RPM and TPS site. Um, if it's turbocharged, it will clip that value to 101.3 or That's the maximum value that you can have there. So what that means is that um, if you're, say you're at two grand, for example, um, and, you, and you're cruising at, say, a certain throttle percentage, um, say 30% or something like that, and you're at, say, 80 kPa absolute, um, if you put your foot down and the turbo isn't, hasn't spun up yet, then it's only going to go up to about, about one atmosphere, right? Now, as the turbo spins up, it's going to increase and maybe you'll get um, you get up to, say, 130 or depending on how big your turbo is when the speed you're doing and all that sort of thing. Um, but this happens over a relatively long period of time compared to this initial um, transition event here. So this is the thing we really care about, and that's the thing that gives you a flat spot if you get that wrong. Um, now, if that is the steady state value, you don't want the ECU to be learning that and putting that in the cell there, because then when you open the throttle to that, it'll give you the amount of fuel for that manifold pressure, not that manifold pressure. So, um, uh, so when you're in um, turbocharged mode, the ECU will write in a maximum value of one atmosphere um, into the um, into the table there. Now, you might ask, what happens if you're if you've already got the turbo spun up, but you're at a um, at a very uh, closed throttle position, um, so when you snap open the throttle, you do actually get a decent amount of boost straight away. So um, if you're say at 100 kPa and you snap open the throttle, and you can go straight up to to 160 or something like that, um, it's true that you won't get that. You'll actually have to wait for that to happen, but in practice, it's not really a problem because, um, for a start, that normally only happens at fairly high engine speeds. So um, by that time, the amount of, um, because the map filtering is based on engine speed, at the high engine speed, um, you don't actually have a big problem with the map sensor delay. Um, could you, it would be possible to get around that, yes, if you used the, um, the classic transit throttle enrichment model and had eight tables and worked out um, if you start from this throttle position and you happen to be at this manifold pressure, then going to that, you do that, but he's got time to tune all those things. Um, this actually still works quite well. Um, another question people ask is how does it work for supercharged engines? Um, and the answer is really well, just like naturally aspirated, because um, you don't have this lag here. You, as soon as you open the, the pedal, you've got whatever the um, uh, whatever air pressure you're going to get. Um, because the rotor is coupled to the engine. So when you're in supercharged mode, the ECU writes in whatever the manifold pressure is here. It doesn't clip it to one atmosphere, um, which means that it's basically the same as a natural aspirated engine except with higher pressure. Um, so that works really well also. Um, next question I've seen people ask is how does it work with um, individual throttle body engines that are tuned on TPS? Now, that's a bit of a question because there are two common ways that I've seen people do this. There's the sort of basic way that doesn't really work um, as well as the other way, which is where you don't have a map sensor at all, and you just have the values in the in the fuel map, um, uh, assuming that the map is one atmosphere, um, which basically means you're tuning only off TPS, you're not using the map sensor at all. Um, and in that case, the map prediction won't do anything for you at all. Um, but also, in that case, you don't need it to do anything because um, 
you've already got the TPS, which is going to respond really quickly. Um, in the other case where you've got the, um, the fuel map, which has got TPS in it, but it's still using VE, and you still have the map sensor as well. Um, so normally you'd have the map sensor connected to um, all the runners together, and you'd have a, a balance tube that, um, so you get the map signal from um, all the cylinders. Um, it actually works really well. It's just the same as a single throttle engine. Um, the manifold pressure still has to change, even though there's not really a manifold um, as such. Um, the runner pressure, if you like, or port pressure or whatever, still has all the same problems as measuring the uh, pressure in, in that manifold. Um, so that still works really well for that situation as well. Um, I saw someone saying that changing the fuel pooling percentage actually gives you a steady state change to the fuel, um, and it doesn't because what happens is um, whatever you change in the, um, in the X here, which is this 20% value, um, in the steady state that's the same amount that get, comes out here. So it only changes in the transient thing. But sometimes people put um, huge values in here for X, like 60% or something like that. Um, and that's going to throw out your mixtures um, a lot. Um, the highest I've ever seen um, on a, a warmed up engine has been about 30%. And that's with a injector that's really not matched well to the inlet port design. More commonly, it's like 15, 20%. Um, what's the next question here? Should it be throttle position or pedal position? So, um, I saw someone try to argue that it should be based off pedal position and not throttle position. Um, and that's, hopefully it's obvious why that's wrong, but I'll sort of draw it here if it's not. So if you've got um, a drive by wire setup, the ECU is connected to the pedal, and the ECU controls the throttle. Um, it's actually the throttle that determines the amount of air going into the plenum, not the pedal. So you can change your pedal translation table in the ECU. You can use cruise control. You can use idle control. Um, all the things which, which affect the, um, the position of the throttle blade. Um, and that's what affects how much air goes into the plenum. Um, I don't know why this person seemed to think it would be pedal position. Um, his arguments didn't really seem to make much sense, but um, yes, it does have to be pedal position. Um, one thing that might be confusing to him is if you've got a um, cable throttle um, and you have a throttle bypass, like an idle control valve or a warm-up rig or a wax pellet or something like that, then that's actually going to confuse you a little bit because at idle, the throttle position is going to be 0%, but the manifold pressure here is going to, yeah, it's going that way, that is. The manifold pressure at, say, 800 RPM might be you know, 30 kPa or it might be 33 or it might be 40, depending on how much throttle bypass you've got here. So I think in an ideal world, um, you'd have a correction um, or you'd 4D map the predicted map based on um, this idle air amount as well because it's, it's definitely going to change the amount of air that goes in. And maybe that's why the guy was getting confused, because he's thinking, oh, when the engine's cold, you're going to have um, less vacuum, you're going to have a high manifold pressure. But the reason why you have a high manifold pressure is because you've got more throttle bypass to make it happen. With a drive-by wire, that all comes out in the wash. Um, in practice, yeah, it'd be nice to do that to, to get a little bit more accuracy, but um, in, in real life, this works pretty well. Um, yeah, does it work with batch injection? Yes. Um, so all this still happens with batch injection, but the the thing that's different is that the um, the synchronization of the injection pulse isn't going to work correctly with batch injection. So um, you're not going to get this right, which means you probably still need some amount of asynchronous injection pulse. Um, and in the Haltech system, you can only do that if you enable the classic transient throttle and the predicted map at the same time and then use the classic one just for the um, asynchronous injection. Um, does the fuel flow model take injection cut into account? Yes. So um, this um, assumes that the 
um, injected is delivering this amount of fuel every injection cycle, so every um, 720 degrees on a four stroke or 360 degrees on a two stroke. Um, but if the um, uh, if the ECU is in fuel cut for whatever reason, so D cell or uh, rev limiter or something like that, um, then this amount becomes zero. Um, so you don't get any more fuel being added to the pool here. You don't get any direct injected amount, um, but the you'll still get the amount of fuel evaporated from the puddle. Um, and this is actually one of the reasons why um, running fuel cut on highly strung engines as a rev limiter is can be a bit dangerous is because you still get a certain amount coming here off the puddle, um, as well as the fact that you know, you're probably going to get some left over um, unless you time the injection um, perfectly well with the intake stroke. Um, so yeah, so that also means that when you come out of D cell fuel cut, you're going to get an extra amount of fuel because it's got to build up the puddle. Um, and then another question is, does this replace the transient throttle model, model or do you use them together? Um, it's intended to replace the transient throttle model, um, but if you um, if you find that you still need some in asynchronous injection, um, then you'll need to use the classic one as well. Um, and the last question that I've, seen, that I've seen is that it seems like a band-aid and if you think that, then go back and watch the other video where I explained all this in the first place. And then hopefully that'll work. Thank you.